Hey guys, there are many contentious and frankly dodgy uses for AI in terms of photography, but I think we can all agree that one of the least contentious is upscaling images. There are, of course, many completely legitimate reasons why you might need to use AI to enlarge an image. You might have an older shot, for instance, that you took on some ancient old camera and you'd like to get it printed nice and big. And AI upscaling is a fine and extremely useful way of doing that. It's also very useful in professional terms. We run a little boutique design agency here. And we're often sent extremely small, like 300 pixel, 500 pixel images by clients. And being able to upscale those so that we can present them on a website and they look decent is exceedingly useful. And when it comes to AI upscaling, the name that everyone, of course, is familiar with is Topaz Labs and their famous app, Gigapixel. Been around since about 2018, it wasn't the first commercially available upscaler, but it's definitely the most famous. And more recently, Adobe have actually folded some of those Topaz models into the latest version of Photoshop, Photoshop 2026. You can find a generative upscale in there with the Topaz model attached, and you can pay through your Adobe credits to enlarge your images inside Photoshop. However, if, like me, you are on the photography plan, which gets you Lightroom and Photoshop, then you may have discovered that uh, Photoshop had been a bit mm, stingy with the credits. I tried it, I did two upscales and exhausted my lifetime supply of credits for those upscales. And Adobe helpfully included a link in their alert message telling me I'd run out of credits, where I could go along and sign up for yeah, you guessed it, another bloody subscription. 16 bucks a month minimum. Buy me some credit so I could further upscale some images. And as hard as it was for me to walk away from that brilliant offer by Adobe, I did. And I did so for a couple of reasons. Firstly, that upscaling is currently an absolute piece of shit. And secondly, it's crucifyingly expensive with a completely vague pricing model that makes it virtually impossible to work out what you're going to be paying for any of the AI stuff that's currently in their apps. And so reluctantly, I had to decline the offer and just stick with my base photography plan. Now, I don't know why the standalone version of Gigapixel is so much better upscaling than the model that they flogged to Adobe, but it is. In the latest version of Gigapixel, the non-AI version, which you can currently get, it's got some interesting new models in there. And so whilst I resign myself to the fact that I would just be using Topaz Lab software going forwards, I was browsing the internet and I encountered a very interesting new plugin called Etty Image Generator. And what Etty Image Generator does is give you access to the latest cutting edge models. You go through a third party service called Replicate. You buy your API credits over there. You can just buy 10 bucks and it's a top up system, no subscription. And when you use the app, it's completely transparent about the costs of any upscales that you're doing. So you always know before you get into it, what you're spending on any image. But more importantly, in my testing, I have found that one of the models in Etty Image Generator that gives you access to an upscale model called Crystal gives far and away the best results, particularly on people and faces of any AI upscaler I've used thus far. So I'm going to walk you through how it works in Photoshop. And then I've done a bunch of examples because we always bring the receipts here. And you can judge for yourself just how good this is. All right, let's get onto the map. 
Here is the plugin we're talking about, Etsy Image Generator. You can download it from the website here. I'll put the links to all this in the description below. I'm using the Pro version. If we go back to Photoshop, you can see that its core purpose is actually the creation of generative images directly in Photoshop, same as Adobe's own Firefly. I've got no interest in that, but if you do, it's got all the latest models in here, Nano Banana, etc. And the developer, of course, updates these or adds or removes them as new or better ones come along. But the bit we're interested in is in the Pro tab here. And we've got these three upscale models here, Clarity, Crystal, and Topaz. Not going to use Topaz within this plugin. We're only interested in these new Crystal model. So you can see here the pricing. Up to 4 megapixels is 5 cents, between 4 and 8 megapixels, 10 cents, 8 to 16, 20 cents, and higher might cost a little bit more. I've done about 70 or something upscales with this, varying in size from 2 all the way up to 10, and I think I've got about 70 uh, upscales in there to give you some idea of how far your 10 bucks will go. Compare and contrast that with Adobe, where you have to go on a plan, minimum of which is about $17, Credits don't roll over, and the number of credits that you use to do your generative upscales and anything else associated with AI in Photoshop is completely vague. They obfuscate that information. They make it as hard as possible to see what you're actually being charged to use their services. So it's very clear in here. And you have your 10 bucks sat there in the account. And when you run out, you just go in and top it up. They don't expire. There's no rollover, none of that mucking around. So if I click on crystal here in the upscale option and come down here, we've got the settings. I'm going to stick it on uh, 4X upscale and JPEG. Before we do the upscale, I've got to select everything. I don't know why I have to do that. It's a weird quirk of the system, but you do have to command A to select everything in the image. And then I can click on generate and it will begin the upscale. As you can see, it's saying it takes about two to four minutes. I don't find it takes that long. In my testing, this bar moves along quite quickly. All done, that took about 40 seconds, I think, something like that. And here we have the resulting image. As you can see, let's just close that uh, plug in there. It creates a smart object above your background. So you can view the original. So let's zoom in on the ladies. So it was a four times upscale from a 2000 pixel. So we're now at 8,000 pixels, you can see. And that's what we started from. And here's where we got to. It hasn't hallucinated stuff, hasn't gone crazy with inventing detail. It's all quite sensible stuff. If you look at things like her sunglasses, the detail on her t-shirt, it's just beautifully upscaled everything. So now we're going to hop into XM View where I have a whole bunch of other test images to show you because Crystal is great, but of course all these models have their flaws and sometimes it works better than others. But I have to say I'm really blown away by this model and certainly with the way it does things like face recovery and stuff. Now, before we flick through the wider results of my testing, I just want to show you one interesting finding that I discovered with this Crystal Upscaler, and that's that it does a better job on the higher magnifications. The more magnification you give it, the better it seems to do. So on the left here, we have a six times upscale from a 1000 pixel on the Long Edge original, and here is the four times, and just so you can see how good it is, there's Topaz Gigapixel on the right. We zoom in a little bit, we can see <laughs> it doesn't do a very good job at all. So let's whiz through the test results. And the way this works, guys, is this. I took a 300 pixel image here. So I took the original Unsplash, which you can see in the bottom right, resized it down to 300 pixels, postage stamp sized, you know, it's a big call. I understand that. And then I ran it through Crystal Upscale inside Photoshop. And then I ran it through Topaz Labs Gigapixel. And we can see the results here. So as you can see, we've got a tiny image. We're asking a lot from these uh, models. And in this image, you can see that Topaz has done a much better job with the background detail than it did with the people. Got some strangeness going on with Crystal here with this stuff in the back and the lights and the flowers don't look great either 
but it's done a sensational job on the people. Well, more sensational than Topaz anyway. There's still some weirdness going on with the little girl's eyes here, a little bit with this girl here, maybe some strangeness with his teeth. But compared to the blurry mess that Topaz have come up with, I think we have a clear winner there with Crystal. Next example, couple old people in a greenhouse or poly shelter, and we have the original image on the bottom right here, the resized 300 pixel poster stamp size that was used to upscale in the bottom left. We've got crystal left and gigapixel on the right. We've got that weird blurriness, very CGI look going on with these guys. Incidentally, I tested all the different face recovery options for these. I tried it at high strength at low strength i tried gen 1 and gen 2 i tried creative and realistic and these were the best outcomes that i could get from gigapixel and so we have the topaz version on the right and crystal on the left I argue none of them are brilliant there's some weirdness going on with this lady's eyelashes and perhaps with her teeth and the old dude looks like he's got the JD Vance school of eyeshadow a little bit there. Don't know what's going on. But this one on the left, definitely the more usable of the two. Neither ideal. So we've got these two girls and this horse. Here's the original in the bottom right. Here's the upscale version, bottom left. And I would say that Crystal has done a far superior job on this. Horrendous on the right here with the girl something weird that's going on with her eye just blurry horrible shitty mess we've got quite a usable image on the left here so definitely a win for crystal on that one now this was an interesting result because we have some people of color here you know white apparently the ai struggles with upscaling because both of these look pretty dodgy i have to say Obviously, the crystal one is more usable, but it still looks pretty CGI to my eye. There's a quite a sheen to uh, this girl's face and to her hair, which is not at all present in the original. The crystal version, definitely the more usable of the two. This is a blurry, horrible mess with some weird deformity going on with her eye and weirdness with this girl in the middle's cheek. So definitely a win for crystal, but neither of them brilliant. So here's a snowy landscape scene I upscaled from a thousand pixels up. And it's done a really nice job. Only thing I would say is we've got some banding in the sky, a bit of blotchiness. I'm not sure how well that's going to come through on the old YouTube, but it is quite blotchy. Fairly easy to fix, but still it's there. Got the family shot. I thought this was interesting to show you guys this because this is from the over a thousand pixels image. So when it's got a bit more source data to work from, does a really sensational job. This is the crystal upscale from a thousand pixels. or well, everybody's face is looking really nice and sharp. No weirdness going on at all. Again, absolutely sensational. We upscale a thousand pixel shot of this particular tiger in the savannah. It's not got that horrendous kind of CGI artificial fur look that Topaz does every time. Just looks awful. Crystal's done a really nice job on this. The fur looks brilliant. We've got beautiful detail in the eyes. It's even done a really nice job on the blurry background, which is very difficult to upscale. So there you go, guys. If you are a Adobe subscriber and you do do some AI upscaling, just know that there is an alternative to the awful models that they're using in the current versions of the apps. And you don't have to go to Topaz Labs if you don't want to. We'll, of course, include all the links in the description below this video. And if you enjoyed this video, do please give it a like. And if you got value from it, do consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.